But we've got a whole uh, Christmas tree of lights on the dash. E-brake light, ABS light, ESP, BAS light, traction control light. I've got my favorite off-road event coming up here on Vancouver Island in May, which is always filled with awesome off-roading, tight trails, rock obstacles, and all kinds of cool stuff that the JK just is more fun to drive in rather than take one of the giant overland rigs. So today I'm gonna to try to get this up and running. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at the battery, figure out what's going on, see if we can charge it or boost it and get this going, and then start to figure out what's going on with the array of uh, lights on the dash. It's like a Christmas tree. We got things like, we gotta figure out what's going on with the lockers, because last time I took it out, the lockers wouldn't work. There's some weird clunks in the back. We gotta get the air compressors working so we can air up and just kind of go through it and figure out what else it may need. So, so the goal for today is to try to get the JK out of the garage with its own power. And then uh, we'll see what else is still wrong with it because I'm sure it hasn't fixed itself sitting here for a year in my garage. And then we'll make a list of the things we need to do over the next few weeks to get this ready for Jeepo Palooza 2024. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. So the battery that I have in here, I was just about to pull the, the arm from the top and so you still working on the newer Jeeps. The battery that I have in here is quite old. It's from a company called Northstar, which if I get my history lesson right, Northstar was started from a group of engineers that left Odyssey and they wanted to make a competitive battery company that was a little bit more affordable. And then Odyssey bought Northstar several years after I bought this battery. But this battery is an AGM battery. It's supposed to be rock solid. It has been rock solid. And over the last few years, every time I go to start the Jeep up, even if it sat for a year, it would fire right up. But I would always disconnect the negative and positive. I guess, I don't know if you have to do this. But I'd always disconnect the positive, and then when I need to go fire up the Jeep, I would just connect it up, and it would start, like, instantly. But, stupid me, I was doing something with the Jeep last summer, and I must have got distracted, probably filming YouTube videos, and when I left the Jeep, it wasn't running, but I left it in the run position with the battery connected. So it's completely killed it. Now, I've tried a couple of different things to get this running. I'm gonna try one more thing, but I don't know. I kind of feel like this battery may be, may be toast. I've tried all the regular like battery chargers and stuff. I even bought this thing here. This is called a intelligent pulse repair charger. And this has worked pretty good on my other AGM battery uh, in the JL. But I put this on the JK and it really doesn't produce any results. So I'm gonna try, so what, so I've also tried jump starting it. It won't start with a jump start. I've tried uh, a proper battery charger. I'm gonna try this, this NOCO charging thing here once it's done charging up. But something else that somebody had recommended to me was getting one of these pulse chargers. But what you need to do is get a new battery and then hook your bad battery up to the new battery in parallel and then put the pulse charger on the new battery. And then some science happens and it's supposed to revive it. I don't know if that's true. I haven't tried it yet. I don't really wanna yank one of the batteries out of the other Jeeps. So I think maybe if I can't get this going with the jump starter, I'll go buy a new battery. Maybe we can get this going, we'll see. The fact that the horn didn't honk when we connect the negative lead is not a good sign. There's definitely not anything left in this battery. So one last attempt to jump start it, and then I think we might be heading to the store. But before I do, let me know, why do you guys think about doing a refresh on the JK, like a rebuild series? Because I haven't been off-roading much on Vancouver Island. The reason being is a lot of the trails are super tight. They're like made for quads and side-by-sides and then the Jeeps kind of wedge their way through. And if you haven't seen my JK, uh, this is sort of where we started the channel, but it is seen love from every tree on Vancouver Island. It seems like there's dents on the A-pillars. Every door panel is dented on this. I ended up putting corner armor on here because I smashed out the taillights so many times and dented this. My roto packs even is not, it's just there for looks now because I've backed into trees. This is a brand new roof that I put on in the summer and I haven't even used it yet because I went to start it and it didn't start. So if you don't know the JK, it's been around on the channel since day one. So that's like almost six years of making videos. 
and I'd miss hanging out with my local off-road friends and going and hitting some gnarly trails in the trees, stuff that I just wouldn't push the other rigs to and don't want to risk smashing them up like this thing. This is basically half a step away from turning into a buggy. So I was thinking of refreshing it because the suspension on this is super old. It's seen a lot of trail time. There's a lot of things that are worn out. The springs like are all sagging. This is sitting much, much lower than when I originally built it. Although that is nice for these tight trails. We got to look at like all of the armor on here. Some of the, like the powder coating is starting to like flake off and there's rust. So I think there's an opportunity to have some fun with you guys and refresh the JK. I know I've talked about this before. I just never seem to get around to it and use it. And then, I don't know, maybe we can get to a point where we like, I don't know, it'd be cool to engine swap this with like a diesel or something. So let me know in the comments, what do you guys think we should do? But the other big idea I have is to take this down to Easter Jeep Safari next year. That is my goal for 2024 is to get this to a state where at least I can trailer down, which that's a whole other problem we'll sort out later. But I would love to go run all the hard trails, all the hard lines in Moab. But my question for you guys, this is for you guys, because I think what would be fun is to have you guys contribute to how we build this. You know, what suspension should we go with? What is gonna give me the most flex? I don't care about on-road handling. We don't have to drive this to work every day. We don't barely even have to drive it to trails. What suspension brands do you guys think give the best articulation, the best rock crawling builds for JKs? It's been a while since I've done some research as well. I don't know what's been coming out since I originally put the rock crawler suspension on here. It's been pretty good, honestly. It gets really good flex, but the joints are notorious for high maintenance and wearing out if you don't maintain them heavily, which I'm notoriously bad for maintenance on Jeeps. So there we go. Let me know. Let's, let's collaborate on rebuilding the JK. I'd love to hear your input feedback from the JK owners out there, your experience, suspensions. Okay, I am not having a lot of faith in this starting. Oh, probably because it was still left in the on position. I stopped doing that. But um, we don't even get any dash lights when we turn the key. Like, look at this, nothing. That battery is so dead. We don't even get any lights on here. <laughs> So let's see if the uh, Noco charger will um, will get us going, but I feel like we're gonna be making a trip to the store here for some, some battery parts. I was gonna say Jeep parts and then battery parts, but that doesn't make sense either. I'm gonna be making a trip to the store for a battery. So I usually keep one of these in my Jeep because it's more useful than uh, jumper cables if you're by yourself. <laughs> 1,000 amps. I guess first we should actually attach the battery terminals. Wow, that is, the battery is so dead that even, even with the NOCO charger attached to it, it doesn't even flash up on the dash. So might be new battery time, guys. All right, guess we will, Pull that hunk of junk battery out of there because I know I'm gonna get some questions. Now I generally, not generally, I always use an AGM battery. What is it? Uh, something glass mat. I forget what the A stands for. Absorbent glass mat. My understanding of AGM batteries is that they are more shock and vibration resilient. So that's what we use because our Jeeps are always bouncing around dirt roads, obstacles, all that kind of stuff. And the one time it was an emergency, I needed a battery on the trip. I bought a non-AGM battery. It didn't last like, it literally, like it didn't last a week. It was crazy. So I get the uh, absorbent glass mat. I think that's what it is, Absorb, absorbed, absorbent glass mat, AGM. So I always buy AGM batteries. Um, everybody's gonna have their favorite flavor, I'm sure. As far as what battery brand to buy, I don't know guys, like you can get an Odyssey battery. They're super expensive. I think they're about 600 plus dollars Canadian. Just like that North Star battery that's in the Jeep. They're good, 
but they're only gonna last so long anyways. For me, they're a little bit harder to warranty because you can't get them everywhere. I've been using uh, these ones from our local Canadian Tire. They're Motormaster AGM batteries. The thing is, they have a five-year full warranty on them. In the JL, I've had them warranty it once already, so I don't know. It's not like your battery just dies in the middle of a trail all of a sudden, like some other parts that you know you don't want to have to rely on the warranty for with a battery you know, it kind of slowly starts going. So when it slowly starts going, I pull it out, I take it in, they test it, they go, oh yeah, it slowly starts going. Give me another one, we're good to go. So for five years, this was 280 bucks Canadian. That's my thoughts on whether to buy the really expensive batteries. And the other batteries, what are they? The Yellow Tops, Optima Yellow Tops. I don't think that they have the same quality that they used to have from reading in forums and other people's experience. They used to be like the gold standard back when I was building and racing cars and stuff, but I don't know. They seem to have fallen off being kind of the go-to battery anymore. I don't really bother with them. They're an extra couple hundred bucks. They're kind of in between an Odyssey battery, which is like the king of batteries and these guys. I would rather just not spend 300, 400 dollars more and deal with pulling it out of the Jeep every two to three years, maybe. Like we've had the JL for four years. The original OEM battery lasted one year and I've replaced the Motomaster battery, the AGM battery once over the subsequent three years. So I think about two years or so, I tested it. They're like, yeah, no problem, they don't care. The guys working there, they'll warranty it. I'll stop rambling about batteries. Let's stuff this in the JK. And yes, I think that part of the rebuild of the JK needs to be uh, doing something with this rat's nest of wiring we have going on in here. A lot of stuff on the JK was done by me and uh, me learning. So yes, I've been modifying cars and doing all that kind of fun stuff for a long time, but I never really built a Jeep. and. A lot of new things that I learned along the way. It taught me a lot about what I want to do in the next builds, but I did all the wiring on this. And I learned a lot about wiring along the way. I really don't like how this ended up. I definitely need some sort of switch system. When I did this, you know, I was really just trying to save money. I uh, wasn't making YouTube videos originally. And obviously the channel growing has allowed me more opportunity to build bigger and cooler things more access to parts, sponsors, all kinds of fun stuff. And so this really needs to go. But a lot of this is stuff that I don't need. It's wires to the lights that we don't need. Eight million rock lights on here. It was a lot of fun, but I realized I don't need them. Uh, we don't need a subwoofer and stereo system in our JK anymore. Yeah, a lot of stuff is gonna come out. Oh yeah, and air compressor. Let me show you the air compressor set up in here, guys. I have a a tendency to want to do things my own way. And I thought I could do an onboard air system on the JK a lot cheaper than just buying a uh, ARB twin compressor. So this is what I built. It's two Viair, what are they, 470 or 490 or 480s or something like that. There's two of them. And I wired this all in and there's a little controller in the back. We've got a high pressure cutoff it's got a regulator and it's got this 10 gallon tank. I was originally gonna to try to use air tools, but 10 gallons just really isn't enough to do much with an impact gun or anything like that. So with the improvement of batteries, I've switched to all battery tools on the trail. So I really don't need a lot of this stuff. I don't need the security deck because we're not going on road trips. I don't need to secure my gear in here, in here, in, in here in, anymore. It's sitting on top of a subwoofer, which we don't need a subwoofer at all. So I really want to just gut all of this and uh, see how light we can make it and get rid of all that and put a little ARB twin compressor in and uh, clean, clean that up quite a bit. Now I am regretting getting rid of something. I had a cool tire carrier. I can't remember the name of the company, Excessive Industries, I believe it is. I had this cool tire carrier that let me put my spare on board and then I would close it up and it would sit underneath the fastback. It was super cool and it was all inside. I didn't have anything hanging off the back. And I really regret selling it because I sold it because it sat here for several years. We'll deal with that. That's something else we had to deal with. 
and I end up putting this poison spider tire carrier on here, which um, needs constant adjustment depending on how warm or cold it is because it doesn't, it doesn't line up with these pins. There we go. Very well. And, and even when you line it up with the pins, you have to smash it closed. I'm just gonna leave that like that. For, no, you know what? I'm not gonna leave that like that because I will forget. But anyways, it was cool having the tire carrier on board. So maybe I'll actually get another one like that because having the, the spare tire hanging way off the back, you know, you can hit it on ledges. If we wanna turn this into like the most hardcore rock crawler, we gotta be thinking about stuff like that. And the poison spider carrier weighs a lot. So it's a lot of extra weight hanging out the back there. And as you see, needs a little love. But I drilled a lot of holes in the Jeep to get that on, but whatever. It's got holes, it's got dents. That's what it's for. The thing is with this carrier, we can just uh, adjust it with this big bolt here. Just have to remember which way moves it up, so. See if that's the right way. Yep, there it is. Perfect. Back to getting the battery out of here. God, there's a lot of wires. At least this thing has a handle on it. These wires aren't making things any easier to get out of here. Oh yeah, there's a thing holding the battery down. I forgot, there's a battery retainer. There we go. That's gonna make life a lot easier. So not used to being able to pull my hood all the way back, like on the JL, uh, we have the Adventure X system, which means I can't pull it all the way back. And on the Demonator, we've got pillar lights, which get in the way as well. See right there? Can't lift the hood all the way up like that. There's a reason I bought this. Big long bolts like that. Whew, I feel like I need a step stool. This rat's nest has caused me some problems. Next time, we rewire this so we can pull the battery out if we need to. I think I've actually wired this thing in permanently. Oh, there we go. Okay. Wow. She's out. That was a lot more work than it should have been. I was thinking how I can make this a little bit easier to go back in this nest. Look at this. It's like a, a perfect little pocket. We have to thread this battery through and batteries are, are not light, you guys. But I think maybe if I disconnect some stuff, disconnect more things. Problem is I've routed like positives and negatives together, so they come around this way and then tie into the body, but I don't even know how many of these we need anymore. All right, I think I've got enough stuff unhooked, moved out of the way that I can slide this battery in. By slide, I mean jam it in there. <laughs> but I had to take all these terminals off. I pulled off all the aftermarket wiring for lights and all this crap here, this is all gonna go anyways, so I'm not gonna really worry about hooking it back up. Number one, gotta get the Jeep running. That's the goal. There we go. Who would have thought placing a battery would take so much time? The main ones that I gotta make sure stay connected are, we've got our winch, and these square looking ones right here, like that, because those are the factory ones. Th those, pretty sure the Jeep's not even gonna start. We've got this heap of junk up here with 400 million connectors, which we definitely wanna improve for the future. And we will uh, attach our terminals and see if this starts up. My trail dash is lighting up. That's a good sign. Hey! The touch screen on my trail dash doesn't work anymore. So this here 
is a trail dash. Now, maybe I'll talk to them because I'm not sure what to do because it is currently bound to the Jeep to uh, tell it has 513 gears and 37 inch tires. And if I can't touch the screen, I can't unbind it. Even if like we want to replace it, which I kind of want to replace it. So add that to the list. Trail dash, touch screen doesn't work. That should be okay, right? That's good there, like that. You see, you see this all the time under Jeep heads, right? Wires everywhere. <laughs> now, I've got a few other things I know for sure aren't working, which we're gonna have to figure out before Jeep Palooza. The number one thing, the lockers. Last time I took this out, the lockers didn't work. So, so we're gonna have to sort that out here in the next couple of weeks. But let's take it for a test drive and just see how it's running. Now that it's warmed up, the engine sounds great. 3.8 liter, goes forever. Doesn't have any power, and that's probably why it goes forever. All right, let's take the first spin. It's a new rattle. Wow, definitely a lack of power. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go back and check the tire pressure because these tires feel really low. They feel really squeaky on the ground. Oh, we got dash lights. Now, the one thing I hate with these Trail Ready B-Lock competition size rings, these things, they're super hard to air up and air down because uh, getting access to the valve stem is like covered behind all of this. 10 PSI, glad we turned around to fill them back up again. One of the one of my favorite mods that I did to the JK, which the Demonator is in dire need of, is a hydro assist steering ram. Uh, we put this on early on after putting the 37s on, and it's an essential when you get aired down super low with the beadlocks and out on some rocks. It just makes steering possible. Like that's the only way I can explain. Like when you're trying to turn and you're on rocks and you're aired down, you guys know, anybody's wheeling knows you, it's really hard to turn your wheel. Having the Ram assist on here is awesome. I really like it. Seems like it's still working. We haven't flown off the road yet. The JL, I don't know. It, it definitely could have used it when I was in Moab, but for the most part, overlanding and kind of that kind of stuff hasn't really needed it. There's been a few times where I would have liked to have it when we're down in Idaho doing the hard trails at Jeep Jamboree. That would have been really nice. It seems like the JLs are, the handle 37's a little bit better with the factory steering pump. But JK's, the Hydro Assist, awesome. The Demonator 40's, it's on my list because the power steering on the, the Hemi V8 doesn't seem to have as much pressure as the 3.6 liter of the Eco Diesel power steering pump. I haven't looked it up, but that's just how it feels. It is on 40s as well, so that doesn't help. It feels like it feels like it's handling all right on the road. Uh, make sure there's nobody behind me. Brakes feel good. Seem like we can stop all right. It doesn't feel like it's any lacking any power. It's not making any more noise than normal. We do have a what they used to call, I don't know if they still call it, a comp cutoff muffler, which dumps before the rear axle. So, you know, it's a little noisy, but we don't have a big muffler hanging out behind us. Um, steering feels fine, it feels tight. Oh yeah, the springs feel a little bit worn. Uh, like the suspension springs as I go over these big speed bumps. And I would like to lift the Jeep up a little bit higher. It seems like it is just a little bit low. The main thing, other than, like I mentioned before, I know the lockers still don't work. So I'm going to take this to my buddy who can work on axles and see if we can get the lockers fixed because I need that to take it to Jeep Palooza. It's going to be a mess. But we need to figure out what's going on with all of these lights on the dash. I'll show you these lights here. But we've got a whole uh, Christmas tree of lights on the dash. E-brake light, ABS light, ESP, BAS light, traction control light. So. We're gonna need to get those looked at. I feel like that may be related to the uh, wheel bearing that we replaced last time. Uh, this I've seen in the past when the speed sensors go, 
um, that is kind of the behavior we get. So we'll see. I'm not getting any like ABS when I break, like any like ABS kicking on when I break. Take it over to my friend Mike. I know you watch these sometimes, Mike. So uh, we'll be by with the JK soon, and we'll put on a scanner and see if we can uh, figure that out. But let's make sure we get up to highway speeds before we commit to taking this up to Jeep Palooza. Here we go. Oh man, 50, 60, it's clawing for hour, 70, 80, yeah, we're doing all right at 80, we're going uphill, right? It's 90, we're doing 90, that's what we really need to go on a road trip is 90, uphill. Now we are geared to 513, so that helps a lot with the 37s. Uh, it is noisy as crap in here. Let's see if we can get into fourth gear. There we go. There's fourth gear. Doesn't really like it going uphill. Third gear is good. Feels all right at 100. We could do a road trip up, up island for a couple hours like this. Nowhere near as comfortable as the Demonator or the JL. But, you know, rock crawler. Feel, feels a little bit flighty. Uh, we'll have to get that checked. That could be maybe just with the springs sagging. Feels a little bit more flighty. Than, I don't know. I want to say than normal, but what is normal with this thing? <laughs> all right. So the list at this point is we've got to get lockers fixed. We figure out what all these lights are on the dash. We got to talk to Super Chips and see what they say about the touchscreen not working on the Trail Dash 2. I don't really need it for anything other than to turn on my air compressors, which. We can totally just bypass that with a quick switch, but I do need to unbind this or get it replaced or something because do we really need to replace it? I don't really need the touchscreen at all, to be honest. If we get the air compressor working, the touchscreen is fine. We can just leave it programmed for 37s and 513s. So that's on the maybe pile. Like to figure out why it feels a little bit flighty and we need to rip all that wiring out before we go on our trip because I don't want all that wiring hanging out under the dash on a road trip. Uh, we'll see what else we can pull out of here beforehand. I'm going to probably pull the back seats out. We don't need those. Lighten it up a bit. Get rid of the subwoofer. Wash it. Pull the rest of the lights off. Yeah. We've got the nice new roof on. That was a big one because before the old roof would leak like crazy. Huge thanks to Best Top. Great roof. She smells like mud and burning wood and whatever's all over the exhaust. <laughs> manifold and everything like that there we go we've got our list for jeep Palooza. main thing lockers and wiring rat's nest so that doesn't catch on fire but after that full rebuild we got to rebuild everything we want to make this looking nice i mean look at this we've got unpainted quarter panels on it want to do something different with the wheels we need to get some trail grapplers on here because i love those as my favorite tires deal with all the rust lift it up a little bit but i want to put the most flex suspension on there so leave your ideas, thoughts in the comments. Those of you guys with JKs, what suspension flex the most? We want craziness, but we still have to occasionally drive on the road. So we can't, you know, I, I don't think we can do like a proper three link suspension, but like a proper four link suspension, like a four link suspension. I would even consider maybe doing a long arm on here, but what springs should we go with? What control arm should I go with? What steering components should we go with? And should we change anything else out on here? Let's turn the JK into a rock crawling monster. I'm going to suggest another video for you guys to watch right here. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.